Hello everyone and welcome to the class. We have been doing a lot of things in Japanese. We have done verbs, nouns, expressions, new vocabulary every day, lot of kanji characters. Today also we will do something new, uh, some new forms of verbs, some new expressions. But before that we will try to do our uh, assignments that I had given you. Just check your assignments and see whether what you have done is right or not. So, the first assignment over here is look at a calendar and practice verbs and dates with your partner by inviting them to do various things during the holidays. So, the pictures are over here for you. Lot of pictures are given. Date is given. The verb is given and you are to practice with your partner and ask them whether they want to do these things or not. So, well the first one over here is Rokugatsu Jugonichi Kayobi Ega o mimasen ka. So, well over here the subject is I which is hidden and you do not have to say Watashi to isho ni Ega o mimasen ka. Ega o mimasen ka will suffice. So, well this is how you can practice over here and ask your partner and learn new verbs and new words. The second one is a conversation between two people. It was a uh, audio exercise where you were to listen to the conversation and do the questions here. So, well now you can read the conversation as well and then do the questions here. Arun san wa mai nichi benkyo shimasu ka? Arun san wa ichi nichi jiu benkyo shimasu ka? Gozen nanji kara nanji made benkyo shimasu ka? Gogo mo sanjikan benkyo shimasu ka? Arun san wa mai nichi nanjikan benkyo shimasu ka? So, these are the questions. I am sure you would have done them correctly. So, well you can check with your partners as well now and see what you have done. The third assignment here is choose the correct reading for the kanji characters. Now, we have done a lot of kanji characters as you know in our previous lessons and some of them are listed here for you. You have to choose the correct one. The reading is given over here in hiragana as well as in roman. So, well the first one is as you can see in green ue which means on top or above or up. The second one is again in green shita which means down under or below beneath. Then Naka which means inside or passing through or center. Then you have Han which means half. And then we have Dai, the reading given is Dai, it also means Oki which is so, I hope you got this right. Then of course, we have been doing this all along match the kanji characters in column A with column B. So, the first one is Daigaku. Densha. Kyo Akarui Ashita Oki
10月3日。And the last one is 1日。So, I am sure you have done them properly and correctly. Well, now in our previous lesson, we did telephone conversation, informal and formal. How you would talk on the phone to a friend, one, how you would inquire in an office at a reception about someone. If you want to call someone over, you want to know whether the person is there or not, how would you call on phone? So, we did some part last time. This time again we, we are going to do some formal phone conversation. So, let us see what it is. You can see this picture over here, two people are talking and let us see what they have to say. Moshi Moshi, of course, we did. Moshi Moshi is hello only on the phone, please. Remember, it is not hello as you would say, how are you to someone? Hello, how are you? Is not Moshi Moshi, it is something else. We have done those expressions earlier. Over here, only Moshi Moshi, which is to be used on the phone for hello. Now, the formal way of telling who you are is arunto moshimas now vata shi wa arun des you can also say this on the phone arunto moshi mas I am Arun or Arunto e mas. I am called Arun. So, please a better way would be Arunto Moshimas on the phone and then if you want to call someone say maybe your friend you want to inquire whether the friend you want to know about is in office or in that place or not, what would you say now? Mariko san onegai shimas. So now, onegai shimas. Onegai shimas is actually a request. It is, it means please do as the verb says. It is a request. You make a request to the listener to do as the verb is saying onegai shimas. There are other ways of saying, other ways of requesting as well, but for the time being we will do onegai shimas. Now, when you are asking for someone, you say mariko san onegai shimas or x san onegai shimas or a san onegai shimas, whomsoever you want to call over on the phone. So, now what should the answer be of the receptionist? Well, show show o machi kudasai. Please wait for a minute and you go in and the receptionist goes and checks. The telephone operator will go and check whether the person is there or not. So, it is show show o machi kudasai. Show show o machi kudasai. So, well, then what happens? The person goes and checks and comes back on the phone and say something. Now, what is that? Well, sumimasen, mariko san wa kyo yasumi desu. Mariko san wa mariko san wa kyo yasumi desu. Yasumi is a holiday, she is on leave. Mariko san wa kyo yasumi desu or Mariko san wa kyo imasen. Mariko san wa ima imasen, she is not present 
at the moment. And then what is the reply of the person who is inquiring? Wakarimashita. I have understood. Wakarimashita. And then something else is given over here in blue, which is shitsure shimas. So, well, shitsure shimas has a lot of meanings. One, just shitsure. Just shitsure means shitsure. Just shitsure means I am I am sorry, I am leaving, I am sorry, I am I am late. Any of these meanings could be there. For example, in a meeting, if you come late and you want to enter, generally you just can't barge in and you just sit down. You would say, I am sorry, I am late and just make some kind of an action or gesture. Well, shitsure is one word which you can use with shimas. Shitsure shimas, I am sorry for barging in like this or I am sorry for intruding. Sometimes when a lot of times shitsure is also used when you leave a meeting earlier than the others. Well, still people are having the meeting and you want to leave you have some work or for whatever reason and before leaving you would say shitsure shimas please excuse me I am leaving a little earlier. Another place where you generally would use uh, shitsure shimas is when you enter a Japanese house. Generally when you enter someone's house, you apologize before entering and you say shitsure shimas, I am sorry I am intruding like this, I am taking your time. And when you leave, then you would say shitsure shimashita. Shitsure Shimashita. Shitsure shimashita. That I have taken your time, please forgive me, I am sorry. So, this is a very nice expression to know, to remember when you are in Japan dealing with Japanese. It is a polite expression. Also, sometimes Shitsure shimas is used in place of sayonara. Sayonara, I am sure you all know, sayonara is bye bye in Japanese, and uh, sometimes the Japanese people use shitsure shimas in place of sayonara. It is more formal and polite. Well, onegai shimas is a convenient phrase used when making a request and generally the person who is listening to or the person whom the request has been made to will say hi wakari mashita. I have understood. For example, it can be used in a lot of places. For example, say if, if you go somewhere, you call a taxi. What would you say to the taxi man? Well, you would say, please drop me to a certain place. So, place made onegai shimas. Please drop me to this place. So, place x made onegai shimas. It is a request. For example, if you are thirsty and you want to have water, so you go to a restaurant and you ask for water. So, simple mizu onegai shimas. So, these are these are situations where you can use onegai shimas for requesting to do something. And over here as I explained to you earlier, shitsure shimas is an expression used when entering someone's house or entering a room where people are already there or entering or leaving a meeting when it is in progress or you are late, you want to apologize for being late or excusing yourself from somewhere, from a meeting, from a table, from a conference, anywhere 
and also it is a parting expression instead of sayonara, which is commonly used in Japan. And the gesture you make is you bow and you say shitsure shimasu, sorry I am leaving. Now, you can also say shitsure shimasu for example, in a situation like this where you are leaving office at 5 o'clock and people are still working in office. So, while you are leaving them, you want to excuse yourself and you say sorry I am leaving a little earlier than you. So, shitsure shimasu. So, this gentleman over here can say shitsure shimasu as is given over here and the person who is here staying back can say well mata aimasho or mata ashita aimasho. This expression we did in the beginning which means let us meet again tomorrow. So, this is shitsure shimasu, you can, you can remember that, you can use it in a similar situation. Now, last time we also did ikimasho, if you remember. Ikimasho. which means let us go and when you say let us go, you one you include yourself in the activity and two you also decide for the listener, you do not ask for opinion, you just decide. So, ikimasho is what we did last time, but we have something over here tenran kai e ikimasho ka. So, well if you just put a ka over here question word ka over here in the end. It means shall we go. Now, you are you want the opinion of your partner, you want to you are asking your partner and not deciding for your partner. So, it is shall we go instead of let us go. Tenran kai e ikimashou ka? E ikimashou is exactly high actually and Ikimasho. Yes, let us go. And you have Tenran Kai is an exhibition as we did last time. You have some other words also for you, some new vocabulary. Undo Kai, sports day. Bijitsukan, art museum. Cafeteria is a cafe. Doubutsu en is a zoo. Hakubutsu kan, a museum. So, well, you have these new words for you. You can practice with instead of tenrankai. You can say undokai e ikimashou ka, bijutsu kan e ikimashou ka, cafeteria e ikimashou ka, doubutsu en e ikimashou ka, hakubutsu kan e ikimashou ka. And you can of course add the name of the person and ask him directly and expect an answer. Now, we will do something new. I ate bread and eggs today morning. Kesa pan to tamago o tabe mashita. There are some new things in the conversation. Listen very carefully to the conversation and then I will explain what it is. Kesa nanji ni okimashita ka? 6時半ごろ来ました。
So, well, the conversation is again between two people, A san and B san. I will read it out to you once and let us see how much you have understood. Kesa nanji ni okimashita ka? Rokuji han goro okimashita. Nanji ni gakko ekimashita ka? Shichiji han goro kimashita. Ja, asa gohan o tabemasen deshita ka? Iie, tabemashita yo. Pan to tamago o tabemashita. Giu niu mo nomimashita yo. Mai nichi pan to tamago o tabemasu ka? Iie, mai nichi tabemasen. Toki doki tabemasu. So, how much did you understand from this? We have done quite a few things over here. Almost all the verb forms over here have been covered. Well, there are a few new words like goro, yo, yo is a particle, to is a particle and toki doki another new word which we will do in this lesson here. Kesa nanji ni okimashita ka? So, what we can do is we can quickly go through the translation and then explain what we have to do later. What time did you get up in the morning today? Around 6 o'clock. What time did you come to school? I came around 7 o'clock. Well, then you did not have breakfast today? No, I had eggs and bread for breakfast. In fact, I also had milk. Do you have eggs and bread every day for breakfast? Not every day, sometimes. So, well, this is the translation may not be exact translation, but this is how you would say what is there in the language in Japanese like this in English. So, please do not try to translate it word by word. The meaning just might change. Now, what we will do is we will see what all is there in the lesson. Practice answering with toki doki. Anata wa maishu ega omimasu ka? Maishu you have done means every week. Anata wa maishu ega omimasu ka? Iie toki doki mimasu. Toki doki is sometimes. So, well, let us see. Anata wa maishu niku o tabemasu ka? Iie. Toki doki tabemasu. Well, another example for you. Anata wa maishu kaimono o shimasu ka? Iie, toki doki shimasu. So, over here, when you are using this verb shimasu, shimasu will come over here. If you are using mimasu over here, mimasu will come over here. So, please try to do it as is given in the example. You will feel more confident once all of them are done and you will be able to speak in a better way, do more conversation easily. Tegami, tegami is a letter. Anata wa maishu tegami o kakimasu ka? Let us see what is the verb over here, kakimasu. Kakimasu is to write. Iie toki doki kakimasu. In the end we have kabuki and dorama. Kabuki is the traditional drama form of Japanese where it is similar to our uh, I would say kathakali because only male characters perform in kabuki all the time. Female characters are not there. All female characters are also performed by male characters. So, that is one speciality of kabuki and uh, this is a traditional Japanese drama form. So, well, let us see what it is. Mimasu. Anata wa maishu kabuki mimasu ka? Iie toki doki mimasu.
over here we will practice negative form of the verb with toki doki. So, anata wa mainichi ega o mimasu ka? Iie mainichi mimasen, toki doki mimasu. So, well, anata wa mainichi ega o mimasu ka? This you can replace with any name, for example, Tanaka san or Imoto or Oka san, any of the vocabulary that you have done for person. Then, Ega omimasu ka? Mainichi. Niku o tabemasu ka? Niku o tabemasu. Sake o nomimasu. We did tegami just now. Tegami o kakimasu. So, in this manner you can you can change anata for names over here, any of the vocabulary that you have done. You can use any noun over here like niku, sake, ringo, tegami, kudamono, yasai, any of these that you have done and over here you can change the verb according to what you are doing over here with the noun and ask a question and answer. Now, the options are given over here. Anata wa mainichi ega o mimasu ka? Iie mainichi mimasen, toki doki. Mimas. So, well, you can ask like this and you can answer either in mas form or masen form. Of course, over here masen form is given, practices for masen form. So, you can use masen form over here with toki toki. Now, you have done this exercise earlier where you ask preference A this ka B this ka. If you remember noun 1 this ka, noun 2 this ka. This is exactly what we have over here. Anata wa mainichi ega o mimasu ka? Toki doki ega o mimasu ka? So, toki doki is here in the question over here. You can answer as mainichi mimasu. You can choose, you can say mainichi mimasu or toki doki mimasu. Now, over here mainichi instead of mainichi, we will just now do it there as well. Instead of mainichi, you can replace it with maishu, maitsuki, maitoshi. Maishu is every week, maitsuki is every month and maitoshi is every year. Of course, with maitoshi you cannot say maitoshi ega o mimasu ka or maitoshi ringo tabemasu ka. Maitoshi kuni e kaerimasu ka. You can ask your friend maitoshi kuni e kaerimasu ka. You can also ask maitsuki jikka e kaerimasu ka. So, any of these words you can use with nouns, with verbs and make sentences, make conversation. These simple conversations will help you in doing long conversations easily and comfortably without faltering. So, these help a lot. Try doing them at home with a partner, with someone and also try doing it loudly, not inside. Just quietly you mumble something and say, okay, you know. No, always whenever, whenever you are practicing, try to do it out aloud. Now, we have another practice for you over here. If you remember, we did kara and made with time. Kuji kara, goji made, rokuji kara, shichiji made or 
七時から八時まで、whatever exercise you are doing, whatever you are performing, activity you are performing. So, from a certain time till a certain time, a certain activity is done. Now, over here, we will do khara and made, but from a certain place to a certain place. So, we have place 1 khara, place 2 made. Now, what do you want to do with place 1 khara, place 2 made? Now, place 1 kara, place 2 made, nanji kan kakarimasu ka? Made, nanji kan kakarimasu ka? For example, kanpur kara, Lucknow made, nanji kan kakarimasu ka? So, now you would say nanji kan kakarimasu ka? How long does it take from kanpur to Lucknow? But walking or car or train or something else or cycling probably. So, well, we need to tell by what mode of transport it takes a certain number of hours to get from one place to another. So, over here you have a lot of uh, in this exercise over here, you have some pictures. You can see the mode of transport and you can try to tell how long it takes from one place to another. So, for example, Kanpur Kara, Kara, place 2 Made, Lucknow Made, Kuru Made. We have done De, if you remember in our previous lesson, Kuruma De, Hikoki De. Fune de by some mode of transport. So, well, place 1 kara, place 2 made, whatever mode of transport de, nanji kan, nanji kan kakarimasu ka. How long does it take from place 1 to place 2 to go by this mode of transport? So, well, let us see what it is. You can see a picture of a train over here. Well, Kanpur kara Lucknow made, then shade, nanji kan kakarimasu ka? So, this is a question you can ask, you can inquire. So, well, the answer would be niji kan desu. Kan you have done earlier, kan means span of time, period of time, niji kan desu. Now, we have another picture for you. There is a bus here. Same question, Kanpur kara Lucknow made, bus de, nanji kan kakarimasu ka? Well, sanji kan desu. Then we have what mode of transport? Well, we have a cycle. So, jitensha, Kanpur kara Lucknow made, Jitensha de nanji kan kakarimasu ka? So, of course, the fastest would be the train, then the bus, and then the cycle. So, let us see how long it takes. Rokuji kan desu. So, this is how you could tell by what mode of transport how long it takes. Kakarimasu. Now, there was a word goro in our conversation and goro means approximate, around. But one thing is important, goro is only used for time, approximate time, word goro, only for time. And one important thing with goro is, okay, before that, well, juji goro. Ju ichiji han goro means 5 minutes plus minus around 11.30, around 10, 10 o'clock or 10.30 or 1 o'clock, 5 minutes plus minus approximately around this time is goro. Now, one important thing you have to remember with goro is 
if goro is to be used with time like this for example juichi ji han goro then particle ni which generally follows time will not be used for example vata shiva for example um, vata shiva roku ji ni oki mas watashi wa rokuji ni okimasu watashi wa rokuji goro okimasu so please when you say rokuji ni okimasu it is exactly at 6 o'clock when you say rokuji goro okimasu then it is around 6 o'clock and you will notice that it is either ni or goro and not both together as you can see over here when time expression is followed by the suffix goro it indicates approximate time and please only indicates time and not approximate duration of time so it is exact time and not ichiji kara niji made goro something like this no that is not to be used only for exact time for indicating time when goro is used particle ni will not follow time as i just told you for example sanji goro and suitachi goro it can also be used for exact date now you have this picture over here you can ask nanji goro nemasu ka nanji goro nemasu ka and whatever time is there in the watch over here to okay you can tell or whatever time you sleep you can say ju ichi ji goro or ichi ji goro or ichi ji han goro nemas now we have another picture over here of someone getting up nanji goro okimasu ka what time do you get up approximately what time do you get up someone cleaning and nanji goro soji o shimasu ka so what time do you clean so this is how you can use goro instead of ni for approximate time now there was another particle a new particle for you particle to not to please particle to last time we did soshite if you remember which joins sentence 1 with sentence 2 like this okay soshite sentence 2 and it is a conjunction used as a conjunction unlike english it begins a sentence well over here to is also an but it joins one noun to another for example in a class all of you are there well a san to b san to c san to d san number of students all of them are listed and are present in class so this is how you would you would use particle to over here the example is kocha to kohi o nomimas i drink tea and coffee and also ringo to mikan o tabemasen i do not eat apples and oranges so this is how you would use to only thing with to is that you have to name all the objects all the nouns present over there for example in class you have to name all the students 
present in class or if you place a few things on the table, whatever is for example, on my table you have to name all the things with to. Now, look at the picture and ask your partner what they did yesterday, last week, day before and practice negative form of the verb, which we have not done so far. So, well, you can look at this picture and see what is happening. These people are sitting and they are watching a film, someone is sleeping, someone is crying and well, someone is watching. So, kino ega o mimashita ka, kino ega o mimashita ka, ie mimasen deshita. So, the answer is because he is sleeping, ie mimasen deshita. This is a cake. Keki o tabemashita ka kesa today morning. Keki o tabemashita ka ie tabemasen deshita because it's still here, so tabemasen deshita. And then we have this cup of tea. It's full, so well. Kino kohi o nomimashita ka. Ie nomimasen deshita. So, this is how you would use negative past with senshu, sengetsu, kyonen. With these words, you would use past and past negative. Well, now, yes, there was one more particle in the conversation which came in the end. There are two particles which we have already covered in class which come in the end of a sentence. We did ka, we did ne, a confirmation particle. Now, today we will do particle yo, like ka and ne, this also comes right in the end over here. Now, why, why and when do you use yo? Well, you have it right here. Yo is a particle of assertion and comes at the end of a sentence. It is commonly used in contradictions, in assurances and warnings indicating that the information provided by the speaker is new to emphasize information which the listener does not know and it is important to remember that particle yo should not be used in formal situations and also to seniors most of the time, especially to teachers, to, to people who are senior to you in age or in rank. For example, over here you have ikanai hoga ga ii yo, it is better that we do not go. Muri shinai de yo, do not stress over work. Now, with yo also, the intonation is very different. It is stress on a subject, it could be stress on anything and stress on particle yo as well. For example, ima nanji desu ka? You have done nanji, ima nanji desu ka? Ima rokuji desu yo? So, that yo is very, very strong. Of course, it is, it is rokuji. So, the stress is over there with yo. Generally, ladies do not use this, but yes, nowadays, well, the younger generation does use yo a lot, but generally yo is a male speech particle most of the time. Now, we have kanji, we have been doing kanji all along in class. There are new kanjis I tell you all the time. This is a little different as we have done the word toki doki. You remember this, I am sure. This means nichi. This is do. And this whole thing we did for time. So, well, you have you have done this character earlier. Nichi, I am sure you remember, as I just told you, this and then this over here. And if you just put this again, this is a repetition of this kanji toki doki, toki doki. 
I will write it down once again. You can see the stroke order now. Toki doki, toki doki. So, this is the word we did, only the kanji is coming over here for toki doki. Now, we have another word jikan, this word also you have done, you know the word, you have seen the kanji also. Well, next time when you just see this kanji, this character in red over here, over here, you will know what it is, it is jikan. So, I will draw it for you again, G we did just now as toki. Now, another reading is G, one reading we did just now was toki, another reading is G, G kan. G kan. So, once again G kan. G kan. This is how you have done it earlier. Now, you do it like this. Remember it as this character G kan for time. Now, some very simple kanjis today, very, very simple new characters, two new characters for you. One is te, which is hand, te, which is hand and the other one is ashi, which is foot. So, I will make te for you first, te like this. 1, 2, 3 and 4, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now, you will see 1 is like this, 2 is a little longer than this and then the third one is the longest of them all and you have it here a straight one. This is te or te. Then we have another one for you, ashi, ashi. Ashi, like this, make a square, make a line, ichi, make another one like this, and hito, ashi, ashi. So, I think you got the stroke order. See how te is made, you have 1, 2, then you have 3 and then 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, this is how it is made, the te is there and then that is how it is divided. You can see it, te and then ashi, 1, 2, 3, then you have 4, 5, 6, and then the last one 7. So, now you can see that this is a 7 stroke character and te which I made over here is a 4 stroke character. You can remember it like this as well a 4 stroke character and a 7 stroke character ashi. Now, as we have started doing hiragana from our previous lessons, well, we did a i u a o last time, today we have ka. Ki, and you can see the stroke order is given very nicely. Ki. Ku. K, 
and this small thing when you lift your pen or you lift your brush, this is what comes and it gives a nice look to the character K and then Ko. So, well this is hiragana, practice your hiragana and write it properly. Ka, ki, ku, ke and ko. This is all together, so that you can compare the strokes as well. Now, there are some new kanji characters, well I will go over it very, very quickly. Toke, Aida, Machigai, the meanings are given over here in the right column. Then Maniau, Maniau is when you are getting late and you are able to make it that is Maniau. Ashiato, Tariru, Tebukuro, Tegami. Then this is vocabulary, Kesa, Asa. Toki doki, ban, yonaka, kakarimas, kusuri, doubutsuen. Hakubutsukan, Kabuki, of course now it is your part, you have to do all the assignments now, it is not very difficult, some words are given, then the readings in Japanese are given, there is only one correct reading, you have to tick the correct reading. For school, so many are given, which is the correct one. So, try doing that. Then of course, as we did previously, kanji is given and you have to get the correct reading of the kanji character. Now, some sentences are given and you have to fit in the correct kanji, which goes with the meaning of the sentence, which is the most appropriate kanji character and which gives a meaning to the sentence as well. Then match words in group A with meanings in group B. This is in Roman, the words are Japanese and this is the English meanings. And of course, fill in the brackets with appropriate particles, verbs and question words. They are all given in the brackets. You have to check out the correct, tick the correct word. And then there is a small conversation for you. Listen to this conversation. Kore wa dare no tape recorder desu ka? Sore wa Rao san no tape recorder desu. Rao san wa doko desu ka? Rao san wa jikken shi ni imasu. Listen to this conversation and answer the questions given over here. I am sure you will be able to do it, it is not very difficult. So well, we will keep our lesson till here today.
and do whatever we have to do next time. Enough for today. Practice all of this at home and learn your vocabulary and we'll continue next time. So, minasan, mata ashita aimashou. Arigatou gozaimasu. Thank you. Thank you.